Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be working on my uh, John Deere D110 or 100 series if you like. Um, Mrs Shed was out on it the other day doing some mowing, started up normally um, at the beginning of the session. When she got back she turned it off, uh, blew off all the dust and then it wouldn't start again to bring it back inside. I've had a bit of a dig around but I'll just talk about the the symptoms quickly. Basically if you uh, turn the key on I can see the hour meter lights up and uh, that's about it. You give it a crank and nothing at all, nothing happens. I think the, the headlights come on and they're looking a bit yellowy. Um, I'd expect it to give it a bit of a click um, or something if we uh, try and engage the starter motor. So the first thing I'll do is check the battery voltage. Now I actually charged it up overnight so the battery voltage should be fine. Look at that there. I've got 12.6 volts. So that, that should be, you'd expect, plenty to start it. Let's just go through some of the things that could cause that to happen. This machine's got uh, three safety switches on it. One of them's on the power takeoff here that engages the blades. I'll show you where that switch is in a second. Another one is under the seat here. There's the cord that goes to it. It's actually right up in there. And it's just a little button that gets depressed as you sit on the seat. So it's nothing too fancy. And the third one is on the brake pedal down there. Um, the brake pedal has to be all the way in for it to crank. So you can see right down in there is a little grey thing. That's the button on the end of the micro switch. And as the brake pedal comes down, it presses that switch. It's pretty hard to press with my hand. but. Um, it seems to be clicking okay and pressing all right, so I don't think that's the problem. I could pull the switch right out and put a multimeter on it, but uh, or check the, just check the continuity of the poles, but um, it's not seeming like that would be a problem. This mower is not that old. It's probably about uh, six or seven years old, and uh, it's always in shy. I never have any uh, any major problems with it. The other thing is that little fuse there, you can see right here, that fuse, it's a 20 amp. If that blows, um, you'll find the, the hour meter won't come up. Um, I've tested that fuse and it's okay and the hour meter still comes on. So I know that fuse is okay. I've also been through and cleaned off my battery terminals, took them off and cleaned them up. and. Uh, once I did that, it started making a bit of a clicking sound. So even with the uh, charged up battery, all I get if I power takeoff is off, brakes are all the way on, arse is on the seat, hour meter comes on, just a click. That's the, uh, the pinion on the starter motor trying to engage. Next, what you can do is bypass all of that directly just to see if we can get it to crank. You see down here, this red lead just goes from the positive terminal to the solenoid here. And the, um, from, from there, it goes to, uh, through the switch and out here straight down to the starter motor. The starter motor in shot there? Yes, it is. So all that happens is when you turn the key, it puts power on these two, and that closes the, closes the solenoid and uh, engages or sends power through to the crank. So if I take off, one of these is negative, it's the black one, and the other one is positive. I don't need a dirty great big jumper lead to do this one, but it won't hurt. All I'm going to do is put 12 volts on that terminal. That should close the switch and engage the starter motor. And 
and it basically makes roughly the same sound. So that kind of rules out all the, all the other safety switches and stuff. So I think the solenoid is okay. The only other test to do with this is to put the, that power lead directly onto the positive terminal on the, on the starter motor and let it crank over. With, with the key off, it's not going to start. But it should crank. There's a little bit of little bit of spark there, but hardly anything going on. So after all that, I think the problem is with the battery, even though it's showing me 12.6 volts. This uh, this little battery is actually the same size as the one that's in there within. I think that one says 380 cold cranking amps and this one is 370 so it's um this one is 380 cold cramping cold cranking amps and this one is 370 so it's that close it won't matter the only thing is the uh the positive and the negative terminals are on the wrong side of the battery so i'll have to extend the cables or get something else to make them reach if I want to use this battery. It's actually a brand newy um, that didn't get used in uh, uh, in Mrs. Shed's old car before we sold it. But just to prove a point, let's see if we can jump start it. So I put the negative on there and the negative on there. And the positive on there and the if I put the positive on here now, it should crank. Key is still off. So there's heaps more spark when, the, when I contact that and it actually turns over. So there's something up with that battery. Let's just see if it'll start. One of the things with batteries, as soon as I connect this, this lead, the batteries will tend to level themselves out. So you don't want to be um, putting them on then go and, go and have a coffee. Got my ass on the seat, got my foot on the brakes. PTO is not engaged. Clear prop. Nothing. Hmm. What would cause that one then? Got me tricked now. Get that out of my way. Headlights come on. Power meter comes on. Please stand by. I'd be a dickhead. Why didn't you guys tell me that wasn't on there? So with that back on there, let's see if it'll crank on the old battery alone. Put on the brake, ass on the seat, PTO is off. No, nothing. Let's see if I put that one back on there. much proves it for, for whatever reason um, this battery isn't putting out enough um, cold cranking amps to turn the engine over just try that test again if I go from here down to the starter barely a spark so I'll either get uh, figure out a way to connect up uh, 
the spare battery or I'll uh, get a new battery with the terminals in the right places. One thing I was annoyed about when I watched some other videos online, they ne no one ever pointed out where the um, power takeoff um, uh, safety switch is. That's it there. It's on the, on the uh, left hand side when you're uh, sitting in the seat. The contact for it is up under there. It's a bit hard to tell. Um, it's fairly, uh, fairly clampy on your fingers, so you've got to watch out as you pull it around. You don't get your fingers stuck in there while you're trying to sense where the switch is. See that there? That, this big aluminium thing here coming around, point to the right place, touches on the switch just up behind there. So with the, with the power takeoff on, you can get your hand up in there and uh, maybe that way. Maybe, yeah. You can get your hand up in there and fiddle with the button. You can probably take that, uh, you can probably take that connector out and put your multimeter um, on the pins and uh, see what happens when you uh, open and close the power takeoff to make sure that it's actually doing what you expect. But that wasn't our problem in any case. It's the next day. I ended up uh, taking the original battery into my battery shop and uh, to give it a test basically. Well it's not, not my battery shop but it's the shop that I go to and uh, when I got there they put a multimeter on it which is the same as what I did and uh, they only got about 10 volts. So the car ride um, from here to there um, must have uh, completed the damage. I think there was a, a cell collapsing inside the battery and uh, it wasn't making a, a proper connection. Um, that's why I was getting uh, um, getting 12 volts but not, uh, not the full amps out the uh, terminals. Anyway, um, this is my replacement battery. As I mentioned, this has got... Uh, and that's a bit on the condangerous side, isn't it? This has got a... Um, uh, a round terminal on it that's about I think the, the positive is 12 mil and the negative is uh, is um, other way around positive 13 mil and the negative is 12 mil so I brought these little uh, battery connectors if I put the battery in this way um, the cables are too short and won't reach if I put it in the other way I've got the positive over here and the negative over here and, and that's not going to work either I'm just noticing here the positive is really close to this, whatever this uh, bracket is. It's part of the power takeoff. And we probably find eventually that's going to arc there. Can't arc now because the negative is not connected. So um, what I'm going to have to do is put the battery in the other way. Like that. Get them in there like that and then extend the, the positive over to here and the negative over to here and hopefully never the train shall meet because they're on different tracks so we'll see how we go with that that's the that's the negative and that's the positive. So whatever I do, I've got to make sure there's no way they can short out. Smart bloke like myself should be able to figure that out. Just digging through my box of uh, 12 volt crap. I found a couple of used, well that's a used battery lead. And uh, this is just a piece of uh, very high amp wire. You can probably see there it's quite big. I've got a couple of lugs in, uh, in my kit as well. So I should be able to uh, cut both the ends off this one. One end will get bolted into the clamp and the other end I'll solder on the lug. 
Do the same thing with the red one. Got a couple of bits of heat shrink that I should be able to stretch over it to avoid any possibility of uh, a short circuit. That's my plan. Maybe my little bolt will be in the way for this heat shrink, but it's got a fair bit of size to it. Let's do that then. Ain't gonna come out. I might just check over on the mower what's on the other end of the lead. Maybe I can replace the whole lead without having to join them in the middle. Please stand by. I took both the, uh, the negative cable and the positive cable off the mower. The negative's got this little tail at the bottom that grounds something else. And the positive got the same thing. That was, uh, that was the battery end and this was the vice versa, that was the battery end and that's got a little connector plug to that. So uh, if I make two replacement cables with the right ends on them, I'll have to adapt those two little connectors somehow. So I'll put that together and I'll show you when I'm finished. So that's got the positive one done. And the negative one Where's my little black thing gone? Here. That's done, because that'll go on the other end. Let's go and put that back together. Not sure how much you're going to be able to see, but the, uh, the negative one goes right down in the bottom there. So I might just speed you through this, but I'll put those two together and the bolt goes through the top of that. It's got it started. Show ya. That's it down in there. That one. If you're looking for it, but it's pretty easy to find. You just follow the negative cable down. I've got the negative cable turned up, tightened up. I don't know what made John Deere think that was a good place, but that should be enough now to reach across to the negative terminal on the other side. Let's just do the positive now. Positive cable is joined onto the starter solenoid. That's the battery clamp. That's a mistake. I should have put that on the other end. Let's fix that then. Presto changeo, it's magic. So that one can go over there. That one can go on top of it, or maybe even on the bottom of it, so they don't interfere with each other. That's got those little rubber boots installed. I've uh, reconnected that one, that little plug that goes to the fuse there. I'll just tighten that up. I think we can pop the battery back in now. Wouldn't matter which way around it goes now, except for that spring. I think the original battery must have been a bit shorter, but that's gonna be plenty clear of everything. Basically a cable tie. Gotta find the other end of it. 
That's what John Deere originally had on it, cable tie. Okay. Wonder what will happen when I try and start it. No spanners left in there. All my plugs are on, my fuses are done up. One spanner. One screwdriver. Brakes are on, PTO's off, arse is on the seat. Give it a bit of choke this time, which is all the way up. Test drive. Had the had the drive disconnected. Come out of there. Come Flash. Good boy. Come Yana. Good girl. Off we go. Off we go. People often ask me how I keep the grass out of my cracks in the past. I say embrace the grass. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one. I can't really see you.